guy um, who has just gotten off of the plane and came straight here for this interview, so you should count yourself lucky. Um, hi, I, um, I, first of all, I just want to get to know you a little bit better, just mm -hmm. your work and your background, where you come from and what you're doing now. Well, um, my parents are from Mexico and they moved to El Paso before I was born. So I became the first American in, in both their families to be born uh, in this country. I have a couple brothers and sisters, but we were all born and raised in El Paso. So uh, I got Texas deep in my roots. Deep in my, I have like four or five pairs of cowboy boots in my closet. Um, and uh, I fell in love with theater in high school when I got cast for a play, and, and then uh, I thought that's what I was going to be. I knew, well, I knew it was going to be in theater. I thought I was going to be an actor. And all through my undergraduate and, and graduate uh, careers in, 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 in college and all that, I, I studied to be an actor until uh, I graduated, and then um, someone recommended me, my, my playwriting instructor, who I took in playwriting classes with, recommended me for this position at the Arts Management High School. And I taught them, and, and, but it was for playwriting, for playwriting courses. So I started teaching some playwriting courses, and I, I said, this is strange, I'm an actor. I mean, I fell in love with it even more, especially when I was teaching them. I started learning a lot about the craft, and I had a lot of things I wanted to sort out in my life about my writing, and that's, when, that's what got me going. Soon, sooner than later, someone uh, uh, at, uh, at a small Latino theater in, in Dallas called Teatro Dallas, uh, Cora Cardona, called me and she says, we'd like to commission you to write a play for us and say that you're in Day of the Dead and make it about Don Juan. So I said, okay, well, uh, that sounds interesting, but nobody had ever asked me to write about my culture, my background as a Latino before, ever. So this was a, a new development for me. Um, and not only that, but I was impressed that she had a Latino company with Latino actors who were good and were ready and wanted, were hungry for material. So I wrote that and it was intensely satisfying, especially when I saw Latino audiences actually come to my plays. I, I, I felt like this is my mission, this is now my mission. I have to write plays that uh, address the Latino condition, the Latino American condition in this country. Uh, and uh, and since then, uh, almost every work that I've done has, has dealt with uh, with the experience, with the Latino experience in, in, in America. Um, but I don't limit myself to that. I, I've uh, also done adaptations and works that, uh, that don't deal with the issues that have to do with Latinos. Uh, one was uh, Don Quixote, yes. which I did at, at Oregon Shakespeare Festival. And the other one, which was also very satisfying to do, was... Uh, adapting John Steinbeck's The Pastors of Heaven, which is an early novel of his that he did, oh, sometime before Grapes of Wrath, before he became a big man. So it was um, it was fun working with John Moscone and the California Shakespeare Theater and uh, the, the actors, the company of Word for Word on these projects. That's great. Um, we're actually going to be seeing Pastors of Heaven tomorrow. Okay. Uh, and I was going to say that for the end, but I was wondering since you brought it up, can we talk a little bit about, more about how you got into writing that? I mean, how did John yeah. Stein come into the picture? Well, um, he came into the picture between the people from Word Forward and John Moscone before I ever entered into mm -hmm. it. They were looking for uh, a co something to collaborate on, and they were thinking first big novels. They were thinking like, uh, you know, Anna Karenina, Russian novels, like that. <laughs> And then they started thinking, well, let's stay with America for a while. Let's look at America. And they were looking at East of Eden, uh, possibly, something like that, and, and to bring the word-for-word -word style in, in, into that work. But it just seemed big, 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 big. So uh, they said, how about this one? And they pulled out this little gem, um, The Pastors of Heaven, which I hadn't heard of before. Mm -hmm. And John read it and fell in love with these stories. It's a short story cycle. Um, that he wrote early in his career as a, as a fiction writer, as a novelist. And, um, and they were interconnected short stories. After they determined that that's what they were going to do, then they came to me. They wanted to know who's the person for this job to, to help adapt this, this story. And uh, my name was the first on both their lips. And um, when they offered it to me, I, I, I said, well, I'm really kind of busy. I don't know if I can look really, really busy. But send me the book. And I read it, and I loved it, but I, I said, no, I can't do it. I'm, mm. too, I'm too busy. And John wouldn't take no for an answer. And John <laughs> just insisted. He says, you got to do this. We'll make it work. 
Tell me what your schedule is. Well, I'm booked for the next two years. All right, we'll do it after you're done with those projects. That in three years we'll do it. We'll work on it. We'll set a workshop every six months so you can, so, you, so we can ease you into it on, on those periods when you're free. I'm, well, all right. And so we started to do that. Um, and the more we started working on it, the quicker uh, the process went. Um, but uh, for our first few meetings, we didn't even uh, we didn't even um, bring in any of my writing at all. We were still dealing with, with the stories. Yeah. So we have a question from oh, the fantastic. Twitter world. Yes. Um, this is from Trev Allen. He says, "Hey, Hello. Octavio, glad to see you representing the San Francisco Bay Area playwrights in D.C." When is your new musical going up? Oh, a new <laughs> musical. <laughs> well, I am writing a new musical. Uh -huh. I'm very excited about it. Uh, I, I, I come rather late to the idea of, of working on, on musicals. Mm -hmm. I've done plays with music before. Um, but Trevor's right. I am working on something with South Coast Repertory. Uh, and my composer, my partner in this is Adam Wong, who is a marvelous mm -hmm. young man with a big heart of gold and he is brilliant brilliant composer um i brought his name up to the people at SER when they asked me about this project about commissioning me for something and i said you know i want to do a musical I went, okay and uh, uh who do you want to do it with uh, that was montoya out there <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh i said uh i said uh adam Guan, and they never heard of him so they said, okay, okay, but they went to New York to meet him. They liked him a lot, and they asked him for advice on other chamber musicals they could look around because they wanted something for their, their second stage. And he says, well, funny you should mention that. I have something here you might want to be interested in. And he gave them Ordinary Days. And they loved it, and they produced it also in their season. So I essentially got Adam two gigs. <laughs> Actually, he got the second gig all on his own. Abundance. Abundance, exactly. <laughs> a great thing about Ordinary Days. Oh, so it's really, things, yes. really, really good. I saw that. Um, so anyway, um, we hope to do an, a workshop. We are going to do a workshop in, at the Pan Pacific Festival of the work, which right now is called Cloudlands, but it's going to change. The title is still in flux. And then after that, we'll see. The, uh, the Pan Pacific Festival is in April. Really in April. So. Thank you. Thank you for that question. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, we've been kind of, we've been ending most of these interviews with the question of, what do you see for the new play field, for the new play sector in the, in the future, in the next you know, 10 years, five? Well, um, what, I see, what I see is... What would you is, like to see? Well, what I'm seeing is that there's a, going to be a glut of, of playwrights. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a lot of young people out there who are excited with the idea of, of writing plays for live audiences. Uh, and, and a lot of them um, um, are opting to do that instead of going into film, which is now also more democratized and, and more accessible to people who have no money. Um, uh, so I think there's going to be a lot more writers out there and not enough theaters doing new work. So I think a lot of the, a lot of the smaller theaters are going to, um, I, I'm going to challenge them to do more new work. Those, those theaters that, that are traditionally only include a season of something from Broadway, something traditional, something musical, da, 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 that don't necessarily ever think of producing new works, I'm going to challenge them to try to open up the field so that uh, all these writers get, get, more, get, get, their, get their voices heard. Because uh, it, it can't die with, with, it can't just be my generation. Mm -hmm. I actually appreciate the competition. I appreciate the next generation coming in and bringing in strong voices that challenge what I bring to the table as well, because they 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 uh, they raise the bar in the game. It's great, you know. I think it's very important. Thank you, thank you. All right, so Octavius Solis has challenged you to be prepared. All right, so thank you so very very much for coming. Thank My you. pleasure. Thank so this is really enjoyable. Yes. Thank so, you. Thank you all. so much. Bye -bye.